In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Scrapey Splash so you can scrape dynamic websites and JavaScript content using Scrapey. My last video was on a basic Scrapey project. If you haven't seen that and you're interested in that, go ahead and watch that. I also have another video that shows you how to set up Splash. I'm not going to cover that on this in this video here. This is just the integration between the two. So I have des Docker Desktop running and I have my Splash running. If we come over to my browser here, you can see that this confirms that Splash is working. and I have a Scrapey project started. If I do this tree command, you can see that we've got the default files here. So you also need to do pip install scrapey dash splash. This is what we're going to be using to um, make the two work together. Uh, there's a few things that we need to change in the settings. I'm going to go ahead and I'll do those first for those of you guys that just want to see that bit. And then I'll show you how to use the Scrapey shell with Splash. And then we'll do a quick demo project too. So if I come over to the documents that I have open here, we can see that we've just done this, the pip install Scrapey Splash. Uh, we have Docker running. Um, this is a different way to do it. Uh, it's up to you how you want to get on with it. And then we see we have these configuration here. So it says we need to add all of these to our Scrapey settings. So to put all these settings into our uh, settings file, here it is under the splash demo. So I need to CD into another directory. And now we can see that I have the settings.py. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use Vim to add these in settings.py. If you have a default or blank settings file like I do here, a lot of the stuff is already commented out. Um, if you are using different uh, middlewares and uh, um, spider middlewares, then you'll need to put these in the right place. But because I'm only using Splash for this project, I'm gonna put them all at the top of the document, just underneath the bot name and this here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, let's give ourselves a little bit of room, and I'm gonna say uh, Splash, set up for lack of a better name and if i just scroll down so we get it more in the part of the screen where we can all see there we go so i'm going to copy all of these that it says that we need to put in so the first one is the splash url so i'm going to copy that put that in here now i know that this is on localhost port 8050 so i'm going to just write that in there this is probably going to be the same for you, but you'll just need to check your splash URL. And that is the one up here that I showed you just a minute ago. So the next thing we want to do is copy the middlewares. So let's copy those, put those in. I know the formatting's all off. It's because I'm pasting directly into Vim. We just have to get over it for the moment. And we'll put in the spider middlewares and then the dupe filter class. Let's put that in. And then the HTTP cache storage, let's put that in as well. So I'm just going to save and close that. So that's all we need to do for the moment. But what I'm going to do now is, I'm, before I get on with a slightly larger project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can use this with the shell. So I'm going to do scrapey shell. I'm going to run the shell. And this is how we would normally check to uh, interrogate and pass the response to the web page. So I've got a website here. Uh, and this one is a website that will not let you scrape because it all is all the products are loaded dynamically if you check the source you would see that that doesn't um, there is none of the information there it's all dynamically loaded i'm going to copy the url and down in my let's clear that up i'm inside my scrapey shell i'm going to do fetch and i'm going to give it the url and we're going to hit enter and it's going to say we've got a 200 response which is good so if i type response we should see that there. So if I do response.css and we put in the title text.get, we got the text of the title back. So all good so far, and we're not actually using splash yet. But if I go ahead and inspect element and try and get out, let's just say the name here, that's an h4 tag. So let's see if we can find any h4 tag. So let's do response.css ss h4. So we got lots back and let's just do the first one. So we got search results, okay. So if we look through this, we can see that we have, let me do got dot for the text, that will be easier. So actually I'll just clear that. So if I do um, H4 and then put two colons in the text, that's what we're gonna get and I'll do dot get all. And we can see that all of these are 
parts of the website, but none of them are the product names. Despite looking over here, that's too small for you guys to see, not a bad. Looking over here, the actual products are in H4 tags. So I'm gonna run the shell using Splash. Now I have my Splash running, uh, which I just showed you. So what I can do is I can redirect my request through Splash to get the response back into the shell. So let's do fetch. And let's say we need to give it our Splash URL, which is our local host. 8050 this is just this is the one we just put into our settings file and then we do uh, render dot html which is the point that we want to hit and then we do a colon and then we can say url is equal to and then our url here so if i hit enter you can see the first one we get is a 404 because it's trying to crawl the robots.txt on our local host, which isn't there. But now I have that response back. So we, again, we can do .response.css. Let's do title dot, uh, text like this and dot .gets. We got the title back, that's good. Now, if I can, I can't go back further up. So we'll do, we'll type it out again, not a problem. Response.css and then let's look for the H4 tags. Let's get the text of all of them and get all for every single one. Hit enter. We can see that we now have down here underneath, this is what we had before. We can see that we actually have the product names as well. We can see that they are all there. We actually picked up some other stuff at the bottom. But that basically is just showing us that Splash is rendering the page and it's working for us. And the difference between using the two means getting the dynamic content back or not. So from here, I'm gonna just quickly try and get some kind of information for each one of these products out so we can put it into a bit of a, pro a, a more of a um, actual scraper. This, I'm gonna copy this class and I'm gonna say, let's clear that so we can see, uh, response.css a um, dot. Now with it, it has lots of spaces in the middle. Uh, in between all the words you can actually just put a dot and that should work for us so let's put one there one there one there one there and let's see if that works okay so we got loads of data back good let's get the first one dot get and that should have in it hopefully somewhere there's the skew there's the link and somewhere in here there should be the price as well Oh, it's all over the place. Okay, so now that I know that that is where the products are, I'm actually going to come back to this one. I'm going to say products is equal to that because this is the line that we're going to put into our scrapey project. And now I can do products.css and I can look for h4, which is where the name was, dot text, uh, sorry, double colon text because that's what we want. And then get and that's the first one. Let's try and get the price and we can see it's in a span tag here with a class of price. So if I do products.css and it was a span price text, oh, text.get, there's the price there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave this open for the moment. We're gonna move over to um, to VS Code and we're going to start writing our scraper. All your spiders need to go into the spiders folder. So inside there I'm going to create a new file and I'm just going to call this one uh, beerspider.py and now we can go ahead and construct our um, spider in here. So let's just collapse that down a bit, make that one bigger. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import scrapey and then we want to create a class of our spider. So I'm just going to call this one beer spider like that. And we need to make it inherit from the spider class, scrapey.spider. And we need to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this one uh, beer, why not? Now I'm going to write a uh, function so we can actually get the data. And I'm going to call this one uh, start requests. And we want to say self because it is part of the spider class that we created. I'm going to say my URL is equal to, and I need to grab the URL of the page we were looking at. Let's put that in there. And then we want to yield back out of here, yield, 
um, scrapey dot request and URL is equal to the URL and the callback is going to be equal to self dot pass which we are going to write just now so we're going to say define pass and we need to give it self and the response from our request response there we go so now I'm going to say go back to my shell I'm going to grab we wanted this line this is where all of our products are so I'm just going to copy that put that in here we'll and then I'm going to say for item in products, we're going to loop through each one and we're going to get the information of, uh, which one was it? Have I gone too far? There we go. There's the price. So let's copy that. I'm just going to paste this in for the moment and I'll format it in just a second. And that was the name of the product. So let's copy that. And then let's put that here. So when we do that, we want to actually yield our responses out here as if it was a dictionary. There we go. And I'm going to say uh, this was the name. So we'll just say name. And then this one was the price. So we'll do the price there. Okay. And that should work for us. Now this is how you would do, oh, sorry, I've missed that. We need to change this to item because I'm looping through each one of those there. So this needs to be here for this one. So this is a basic uh, scrapey spider. Um, if I was to try and run this, we're probably not gonna get anywhere because I haven't put the splash, I uh, haven't told it to run splash yet. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to um, check that I'm in the right folder. Yes, I am. And we're gonna do scrapey crawl beer and let's just run it and we'll see the errors because it won't find anything and then we'll run it again with splash added uh, here we go so we got the finished we got the request but there was no information there it didn't find anything so it didn't actually get anything out so the last thing we need to do is to change a little bit of our code so that it knows to look to splash for the response first. What we need to do if we come back to the documents we were looking at earlier, we can see down here in this example that we need to import scrapey splash and then change our request to splash request. So I'm just going to copy that and put that in there. And then I'm going to copy the import as well. And let's put that just underneath. If I save that, we can see now we're going to be running the splash instead. So if I just move back to our terminal and if I run the spider again, we should get some different output this time because it's going to be using splash to render the page and therefore finding the products. There we go. We can see them all just there. So that works perfectly. If I do it again and I give it O for output and I'll just say uh, beer.json file, uh, we can just see the output. Uh, we can see the um, products in adjacent format so essentially that's it guys all you have to do is you need to make sure that you have uh, splash set up again i've got another video for that little link down below if you need to do that it's really simple um, and then you need to add in the middlewares and the settings and then change your request to splash request so if i just come back to vs code we should have a file in here there's our json file uh, it has some chain strange characters in that we would need to get rid of uh, but there's the data so pretty straightforward. So thank you very much for watching. Um, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, drop me a comment. If you're interested in this sort of thing, there's loads more scrapey and loads more web scraping to come as well as loads more on my channel already. So thank you very much guys. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.